I'm going to go out and I got a roll of coax. I'm going to throw it over my shoulder. I'm going to go run some coax out to my beans so maybe I can uh, just get out a little bit better tonight. Just call me a card all man. Yeah, I hear you on the back scatter triple four. Getting the firmware is only half the story. Today, I'll give you the top three receiving tips to do well with HF receiving on this Kwangsheng UV K5. Tip number one is to, well, you need a good antenna. It can be wire, could be a magnetic loop. A magnetic loop is good, provided it's not too small, because it's a narrow band antenna, which is a really good thing to have with a radio like this that doesn't have much of a front end. As for a wire, maybe five or six meters minimum. Put it as high as you can and away from as much RF noise as you can. That will ensure best reception. You could even use a home station antenna. Though bear in mind, there may be issues with RF overload. Right now, I've got the HF multiband antenna, a full-sized antenna. We come to this magnetic loop, which does about 21 to over 50 megahertz. It's a narrowband antenna, which should make it a perfect companion for a receiver like this that has a wideband front end, if it has any selectivity at all. Beacon on 10 metres, VK3 RMH. As you can see, we're receiving FT8 signals. And by the way, the app I'm using is called FT8CM. Tip number two is to ensure you've got a selective front end. That means putting some form of low pass or band pass filter ahead of the receiver between it and the antenna. Because this is such a small radio and only really designed for VHF and UHF, use on other frequencies does mean that you are at the mercy of a lot of other signals on a lot of frequencies because the front end filtering of this isn't provided. Therefore, you need to provide it yourself. The first option, and I really recommend this, especially if you already have one, is a 30 megahertz low pass filter. These are very common and quite cheap at ham fests. This is a high quality type, capable of 500 watts, but also perfect for this application even though it is a little bit bulky. It doesn't matter which way you connect it. The antenna goes in here, and in the other connection, you'll just need a cable and maybe some adapters to connect between the filter and the Kwang Sheng. The only shortcoming, apart from its bulk and weight, being bigger than the radio, is that for 50 megahertz or the six meter band, this filter is no good. It will reject signals on that frequency so you're really limited to covering frequencies below 30 megahertz still it's a good option and might even cost you nothing if you have one of these lying around tune to 28074 this is the ft8 frequency and as you can hear it's quite active
24 megahertz FT8. Another option is a tunable bandpass filter. This one uses a transistor radio tuning capacitor which resonates with a 10 turn coil wound on a yellow toid T37-6. That will work on frequencies between about 21 and 55 megahertz. So you're covering the 15, 12, 11, 10 and 6 meter amateur band, even 8 meters if you've got that and some countries do. Important thing is that RF is coupled via two turn links. There's two two turn windings. One of them, this one here, connected to a BNC that comes from the antenna. And the other one, which I've tried to keep the wires very short, another BNC and that goes into the Krungsheng. As to the schematic diagram, here it is. Very simple. There is a bit of a shortcoming where you do need to adjust the variable capacitor to peak on desired signals, but it is a band pass filter, not a high pass filter, which means that if you're right near an AM broadcast station, then this type of filter will reject the strong signals from that, which could be helpful in some locations. As it's only a single tuned circuit, it probably won't reject as much as the high quality shielded 30 megahertz low pass filter, but in many locations, it would still be adequate and be vastly better than not having any filter at all. So we've got the incoming signal coupled into the toid via two turns, tuned circuit here, you adjust that to your frequency of reception. It's not very critical, you can tune a megahertz either side and it will still be okay. And then the output is coupled from this winding into the receiver. Coil is a bit fiddly. Uh, just wind the larger coil first, do your 10 turns, and note that turns is counted as the number passing through the middle. And as for the wire, it's not critical, about 0 0.5, 0 0.6, maybe 0.7 millimeters diameter available from an old transformer or similar enameled copper wire or winding wire. The signal, I got the running, running the talk back, just the way the audio line. A beacon in New Zealand. A double sided circuit board. Is in the place. Davoy, what's going on? The end of that. But I had trams and golden eagles and all kinds of cool radios with VF. I've made the 23 channels, get like 60. Had VF. The dumbest thing I ever done. I should have kept them. And the guy that I sold them to, a complete buffoon that doesn't even know how to use them. Third point is be aware of gain and bandwidth settings. Gain is a long press of button four. As you can see, a little menu comes up, and the up and down buttons can be used to adjust it. Set it for not maximum signal strength, but best signal to noise ratio. While gain is button four, a long press of button five gives you a bandwidth menu. I suggest for most HF applications, either two or three is the best. Though there might be times when six gives more pleasant listening on a stronger signal. 
having your bandwidth too high means that too much noise either side of the signal gets through and that can spoil reception. I've gone through three tips to help you get best HF reception from the Kwangcheng UVK5. In summary, use a good antenna, either a wire as long and tall as possible or a magnetic loop. Secondly, use filtering, bandpass or low pass filtering appropriate for the frequency that you wish to monitor. And thirdly, get to know your radio, notably settings such as gain and bandwidth. Once aware of all those, you'll get better than expected results with this amazing little transceiver. For more information, watch my other videos on it. And if you're interested enough to get your own to play with, then just click on the link.